Hi, it's Dwight Mahalitz. I'm president of Effective Managers, and I'm here today with Lynn Stevens, the vice president of Human Resources at Talion. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, very happy to have you here today. Thank you. So, uh, so we're doing this interview for Integrated Talent Management for HR.com, and uh, we'd like to talk about some of the different things that are happening in human resources, particularly innovative practices. So I, I'm right. very happy that you agreed to talk with us today. Thank you. Idea. So the first question is, is what would you see as uh, the latest trends in uh, human resources management? Well, I think that there's a real trend occurring with respect to the role of the manager and, uh, and what we expect of managers in organizations, whereas previously managers were individuals who were accountable for uh, driving results and uh, set certain expectations for employees and uh, the way that they, they wanted those results to be delivered were much more of a, you know, this is what I say you need to do and, and go and do it. And it's changing now much more for the manager to be uh, both a coach and an enabler for employees. And by coach, I mean someone who's really guiding and helping employees uh, figure out things for themselves, helping them to make sure they're on the right path and they're doing the right things. And as an enabler, uh, really connecting the employees to the people in the organization or even outside of the organization who can help those employees grow, develop, and, and deliver on the objectives that they have within the organization. So mm -hmm. rather really than that top-down push that managers used to have, they're, they're much more of that broader coach and enabler in an organization. And I think it's necessary as well because um, now with the speed in which organizations mm -hmm. are operating, setting uh, goals and, and not really looking at them again and, and dusting them off maybe a year later and evaluating individuals on how they've reached those goals I think is a thing of the past and that um, managers need to ensure that they're setting goals that are very fluid and that are changing as the organization shifts and changes throughout the time frame that an evaluation period may cover. Uh, because goals and uh, organizations are changing so quickly, they need to have that fluidity to them. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the things that you're doing from the HR perspective to help managers in this, in this area? Well, we've actually done a couple of things. Uh, we implemented what we're calling our performance development program about a year ago. And in this program that we've implemented, uh, we have removed the concept of uh, a performance tool being an evaluative tool, like a report mm -hmm. card, where um, at the end of the cycle, a manager's going to say, did you meet expectations? Did you not meet expectations? We've taken that away and really looked at our performance development program as, a, as truly development mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that both the employee and the organization, in essence, don't stand still. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that uh, whatever an employee is doing, it's connected both to their personal development, what are the things they want to do, what do they want to achieve, and that those things are directly connected into where does the organization want to go. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the beginning of a, a cycle, a manager assigns, and, or I should say works with the employee to look at, okay, here are the deliverables that I have, here are the things I'm accountable for, here's how they go up to the employee's strategic objectives, and what am I going to assign to you, what are you going to work on, that uh, fits directly in with where the organization wants to go and allows you opportunities to grow and develop. Mm -hmm. And to me, assigning a grade to that or a meets expectations or doesn't meet is counterintuitive to really the whole process of, of development and growth and um, being a leading edge organization. So removing that uh, report card feel, I think, really allows the managers and the employees to have much more productive conversations right, right. and then coupled with that uh, back to my original point about the role that managers have in terms of being coaches we actually put all of our managers on a coaching program so mm -hmm. they understood the concepts of coaching and how do you work with an employee to to really pull things out of them uh, rather than telling them what to do how do you help develop an employee by the conversations that you're having with employees mm -hmm. yeah it's very fascinating. I, I um, wrote an article um, which I published uh, some time ago saying that the performance appraisal system was dead. Yes. Was, or it should be. Yes. <laughs> uh, what, what would you say about the difference between performance appraisals, as you describe them, and performance management? Uh, well, performance management to me is really that managing, guiding, coaching piece, and appraisals have 
as I mentioned, the, that report card feel to it. Mm -hmm. So at the end of a cycle, employees are, are graded, and I think that is a thing of the past. It's been an antiquated system and, and was put in place back in the days when um, really the, the historical roots come from having documented evidence of performance mm -hmm. if you needed to go down a performance management or a performance improvement path or, or a termination path. Mm -hmm. And I don't think those things are required for this. I think that now the organizations need to really, how do they, uh, they need to embrace their staff, they need to engage their staff, and, and there's no sure for a quicker way to, to turn off a staff member by having them work hard on things and deliver and then get a, a grade mm -hmm. at the end of it. Uh, I don't think that's necessary anymore. And in fact, it was a bit uh, counterintuitive in terms of where we want to go. Yeah, there's research I've seen which uh, which talks about fair and timely feedback between the manager yeah. and the direct report as uh, directly correlated to organization performance. And yet uh, the formal performance appraisal systems often are correlated negatively with organizational performance. Right. Yeah. So yeah, and when you talk about the time, and a lot of those systems are set up such that they're uh, perhaps a, a single point in time or maybe twice a year and they're often backwards looking. Mm -hmm. So they look at what did you do rather than what are you going to do and how does that connect into where the organization wants to go. Right. So I think anytime you're doing too much backward looking, you're really not evolving and developing, you're kind of just standing still or, or potentially even moving backwards mm -hmm. instead of uh, ensuring that the whole process really just helps people and an organization move forward. We don't want anybody to stand still. Let's move together in the same direction, and that direction has to be forward. Yeah, yeah exactly. It becomes the right back to the fair and the timely feedback. Anyway. Absolutely. Yeah, and the role of the manager in doing that. I'd be really interested in you talking a bit about, about the role of the manager in the performance management system versus the role of, of HR and where the accountabilities and authorities uh, should sit. Well, I think that the manager is really the one who is ultimately accountable. They're the ones who are uh, responsible for certain deliverables within the organization. And HR, uh, our role is we provided the structure, if you will. We provide the guidance and the support to the managers as they may need it. Uh, but really, it's the managers who, who are ultimately accountable for the, the process. And, and we ask a lot of managers in their role, and I think people tend to forget that in terms of what we expect of managers in an organization today. A manager has to be a subject matter expert in the field that they're in, and they need to be able to manage people, and they need to be able to have difficult conversations, and so many of them are not equipped to do that. And one of the roles of HR is to be able to provide support to managers to ensure that they are equipped and able to have those difficult conversations. And I think HR's role, um, as it's evolved to become the HR business partner, which is a mm -hmm. model that most companies have today, um, the HR business partner is far better equipped to help the manager because they have a much greater insight into the world that the manager is living in day in and day out. Mm -hmm. So they understand the business, they understand the deliverables of the business, they understand how the business makes money and how it loses money, they understand who the competitors are and, and takes all of those pieces into uh, consideration when they're providing and dispensing guidance and advice to the managers. Mm -hmm. Cool, excellent. Um, I'd, I'd like to change gears just a little bit sure. and talk about metrics for a second. So I'd be very interested in your perceptions on metrics. There's there's a lot written about the importance of metrics in, in HR systems and organizations generally and, and big data. Mm -hmm. uh, have you any observations you can share us with us uh, of what you're doing at Kalian uh, around uh, metrics? Sure. So we're a professional services company, so we're all about people. Um, if you will, people is the product that we manufacture. Mm -hmm. Uh, so our metrics, particularly in the area of recruiting, are very critical to us. So uh, recruiting is, a, is an enormous engine at Callion, and we have uh, a large number of individuals who are accountable for the recruiting function. And the metrics that we track in the area of recruiting are, of course, the traditional, the time to fill, and, uh, and those types of things. But we also, because it, people are our business, that's how we generate revenue, is by uh, filling uh, roles for contracts that we have with customers, we look very closely at each headcount in terms of the revenue that drives within the organization. So each recruiter is aware of 
um, what is the revenue tied to this headcount and what is the margin tied to this headcount. So when they're looking at filling a role and they may have multiple roles across the country they're trying to fill, they may, uh, they'll look at the, the metric to say, okay, this particular role has this level of margin attached to it, so I need to put greater effort into finding this role because of the, um, the direct impact it will have in terms of the revenue within the organization. It is a balancing act, of course, that recruiters have because they, they have these metrics and we, the other piece we obviously have to keep into consideration is, is uh, performance against a contract. So um, they need to look at, okay, what is the revenue that's driving within this role? And then they also have to look at the customer satisfaction piece to say, all right, this is a critical role that we need to fill. So it, it definitely is a balancing act. Mm -hmm. But I think our metrics in terms of what we look at uh, in recruiting are sophisticated to that extent because many companies have ideas of what a vacant headcount costs the organization. Mm -hmm. And we really have a, a, a clear sense of what a vacant headcount costs the organization because that's, that's what we're all about, being in the people business. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Um, those, those are the formal questions I had for you. Thank you very much. Do you have anything else you'd like to add about integrated talent management? I think that it's a really fascinating field and I'm really glad to see a lot of companies are standing up and taking note of what it is a company is there for today and what are managers, what are expected of managers today. And I think to me that's just going to provide much more engaging workplaces for individuals as, mm -hmm. uh, as you know, the millennials enter into the workforce, they're demanding different things of employers and it's positive to see that companies are taking all those things into consideration and are, are evolving as, uh, as they need to to fit the, uh, the new way of work, if you will. Thank you very much for your time today, Liz. Thank you. Thank you.